Welcome battery builders to the channel. Uh, this is going to be a uh, two-part series of building a LifePo battery from scratch. So whether you're a veteran and you've done it a bunch of times, there's going to be some unique concepts in this video. Or maybe more importantly, if you're brand new and never built one, this is the build series for you. Uh, I'm not going to leave anything out, going to cover it all, and I'm uh, going to do a lot of safety checks along the way. So if you've always been worried about putting something like this together, uh, I think these uh, safety checks will give you the confidence to make sure that you're doing it right along the way. Part one is the top balance process, and then part two is the uh, complete build process after top balancing. So if you're one of my RV fans, we're going to do this with 280 amp hour cells. Um, if you're one of my kayak fans, you can do this with 100 amp hour cells for your trolling motor batteries. And I've actually done this with 100 amp hour cells for a DIY power station um, or a solar generator, whatever you want to call those things. So lots of uh, use that you can put this skill to. So please like and subscribe. Okay, the build begins on my uh, 2800 lithium cells. I got these from 18650 battery store, I think it is. I'll put a link in the description. Um, along with everything I use, I'll try to have links in the description. Some stuff as I go through, we'll find out. Uh, you know, I bought those uh, in a particular store. Try to note that, you know, so I may not have a link, but if you have any trouble finding stuff, just uh, ask in the comments. So this is the box and ooh, it's heavy, tip it up. Not been open. Um, I couldn't have done that, but I just built his big brother or his uh, twin brother. So opened that one, built that one. So this is a second build, same cells. And uh, I got a few unique things for you today. So we'll uh, get to a uh, just a quick unboxing. That. There. there. All right. Open up. <clears throat> First, we gotta. This will not come out. Aha! There, uh -huh. there is the reason why it was so hard. If I lift this up. And these are in there good. Well, let's uh, let's uh, take a look. <laughs> the cells are in the box upside down because there's all the labels. So there's the top side of the box if anybody ships it or picks it up. And here are cells. So back to the stand. And uh, Still out. Ooh, wee, these are heavy. All right. One really cool thing about these cells are the double stud terminals. So you get a lot more surface area, I think, for uh, connections and makes uh, neat and easier ways to uh, connect all your wires and BMSs and all those good things to it. So that's that. Um, they are good and square at least the other ones were so take that out oh. next cell in uh, good shape terminals good and square it's got the QR codes on it here there's a the bottom but so far indications These look good as the first ones I built. Out. And. Last one out. So they do come packed very well. That should be the top. The issue, so we take that out. <clears throat> And then in the bottom, we got the uh, bus bars, 
and studs and uh, serrated lock nuts if you can see any of that so the the, uh, the double terminal double stud bus bars so now uh, let's get ready to top balance all right the top balance I'm gonna temporarily put these in this battery box <clears throat> they will go back in here permanently but gonna do some unique things for that uh, to install them permanently but uh, this box is a no-co, gosh, the seems lighting here. Box is a no-co 24 to 31 series size battery. So uh, most common battery size folks see like that is either the 24 or the 27 series. So if you take off the lid, what makes this box so good, and I'm gonna have to go around and get some better light, I think. And what makes this box so good uh, for these batteries is you can see there is a divider in the bottom and some divider slots. So uh, this divider can set in something like this. And we're going to put our BMS over here, battery over here. Everything separated, protected. It all fits very nicely. So we'll see more of that uh, a little bit later as we actually put the battery together. But uh, let me get it set up to, uh, again, to top balance. Okay, cells in the battery box. There's that space I was talking about for the BMS a little bit later. But to top balance, take a look at these cells. I've got them set up positives all the way down one side, negatives all the way down the other side. So we're going to have just a 3.2 volt battery with a gazillion amp hours set up this way. But that's how, uh, how we're going to top balance. We're going to charge them connected in parallel first all the way up to about 3.6, 3.65. And then we'll uh, connect in series and build the actual uh, 12 volt equivalent battery. So let me get some bus bars on and... We'll be back. All right, studs in. And one thing's a little different about these studs than others I've seen is that there's no uh, Allen key head on these things. It's just a basically almost like somebody took a long uh, piece of threaded rod and chopped it up into little bits. They're all the same on each end. So studs are in. All right, now for bus bars. Um, you should never, ever, ever, never get a spark when working on a battery like this. But just in case, I got the glasses on. So bus bars, we're gonna lay there. Lay there. Lay there. Lay there. <clears throat> All right, building a battery. A 4S battery. You only need three bus bars. They give you four. But as you can see, we probably need six to connect all these batteries together. But that's okay. I've got a jumper. Um, we're going to put that on next. If you are buying two sets of batteries and you kind of top balance them one at a time before you put them together, of course, you'd have a bunch of extra bus bars from the other set. But my first battery is built and together. So we're going to uh, put on a couple of jumpers instead. So we switch this around and we'll put uh, nuts on first and then we'll connect up jumpers. All right, bus bars have nuts on them. I'll just finger tight at the moment. <clears throat> if you look, uh, these two middle ones don't have anything on them. That's the missing space for the stud. So again, positive sign. And then I've got uh, just a little jumper, uh, just some 10 gauge wire and some eye terminals over there. And then uh, just kind of do the same thing for the uh, 
negative side those on and then we'll put some nuts on those and uh, be back all right jumpers are uh, bolted in so now I have uh, all four batteries in parallel all the positives all the negatives and uh, just like uh, Ikea you have one leftover nut all right looking back through my footage and I must not pressed record when I was uh, doing uh, voltage checks on uh, on the battery so just uh, voltage checks on each cell um, they're connected but they will show differential if they have them but uh, let's move down you can't see everything at once let's get the voltmeter in view so closest battery to me 330 battery 2 330 battery 3 330 and battery 4 330 so they are spot on uh, spot on voltage so that is a good sign of uh, quality batteries they're not uh, off when you receive them okay now for the actual charging <clears throat> and this you're going to be a little bit more on your own if you're following along I'm using a uh, this is an eye charger we go 206B. It's a hobby charger. Uh, I've built drones for a long time. All those kinds of things. I've probably had this charger for a decade and probably more, maybe closer to 15 years. So you can still buy these. Very good charger. Um, they are expensive if, if this is all you're going to do. Uh, they look completely different now if you were to buy one now. Most folks use a power supply and uh, that works great for what uh, is going on here one thing that I like about this is is it's got a 10,000 settings but um, I've got a life it says life charge so this lifepo battery um, and I've got it set for 1s so just a, a, a single cell that's what we've got now just a single cell in parallel uh, will be 4s when we build it uh, completely but I can charge at 20 amps. Um, most of the time you see these power supplies only go to 10. And this takes days. It takes days to charge uh, all this 280 amp hours times 4. Uh, so having the, uh, the higher output certainly helps. So we're going to start this up. Uh, and, and just real quick, I'll show you <clears throat> one more thing I've got going on here. Um, the leads connected to this charger these are um, some banana plug terminals that are in there so I, I don't know I had those laying around bought them somewhere don't remember but uh, whatever ends were on I hacked the ends off and put some eyelets on there so I've got the uh, positive lead connected to the leftmost battery and then I've got the negative lead connected to the rightmost battery so that helps uh, just to help to balance the cells, keeps the uh, electrons flowing across all four of those cells. So there's my setup, there's my connection. Again, it'd be hard to mimic unless you already have one of these, but um, that's the, uh, the way to do it with a, a power supply or whatever you're using to get this initial uh, single cell top balance. So let's uh, get started and hold that down. All right, it does a battery check. Make sure polarity is correctly, and then it starts to ramp up on the charge. And we got to 20 amps. So now it's just a matter of waiting. And the waiting is the hardest part. But the, with the magic of YouTube, we'll be back in mere seconds instead of days. Okay, I just want to talk a little bit about the charging process. It took three long days to uh, charge the battery. So what I did is I just took a picture of the charger at the end of each day. You can see it's dark, so right before I went to bed. 
But the, uh, the first day, it charged for about 10 hours during that day, put in 204 amp hours. So uh, into the day at about 3.53 volts. And then day number two, uh, charged for 14 hours that day. So I got started a little bit earlier that day and uh, put in 285 amp hours. Voltage ends up at about 3.57. So uh, you can see very, very little voltage change over all those amp hours added into the battery. And then um, for the last day, uh, it charged about 11 hours and went to uh, and 218 amp hours put into the battery. But you can see here the voltage is actually a little bit lower. Um, what happened was, and let me uh, back up just a second to the other uh, page. You can see here it's charging 20 amps um, at the end of the second day, into the first day also, all day charging 20 amps. But as the charger gets close to, uh, the battery is close to full, then those amps start ramping down. And they go down from 20 to 19 to 18 to 16 so on. Um, I walked by the charger, it was down about 3 amps. So it was getting really close to the end, um, probably had a half hour or so to uh, charge. But I did, uh, I did not get back to the charger for about four hours. So it did shut off on its own, got down to uh, zero amp shut off, and uh, then the voltage starts to drop. Um, that's normal for all batteries coming off a charger. They have a settle point. Um, so that voltage eventually dropped down to 3.4, as we'll see in the next part of the video. All right, battery builders. It has been about two weeks since... Uh, these things were charged and top balanced, uh, not by design or on purpose, but uh, it's because life got in the way. I went camping for uh, part of that time and using uh, this guy's twin brother in the RV, and I tell you, it beats the heck out of the crappy lead acid that was in there. So now I'm going to have two of these. It's going to be twice as good. So after uh, charging, I've uh, taken off all the bus bars, as you can see, and uh, just do some uh, voltage checks. I don't know if I can get all this in the shot at the same time. All right, so you can see where we're at. Maybe you can see. Oops. Helps if I put it on the right setting. So 3.4 and 3.4. So these were charged to about 365 and then been sitting for I said about two weeks. Like I said, they were sitting still uh, parallel connected for all those two weeks. So lithium will charge normally depending on your charger to about 14.4 so about 365 but unassisted by a charger lithium will settle to 3.6 so, so 3.4 volts times 4 is right at our 13.6 that is perfect we have again no variance in these cells and uh, I got to go look at back at the video when I process it, but I think these things started at 3.3 and after three long four, 12, 14 hour days of charging, they're at 3.4. So there is why you cannot use voltage as a gauge for state of charge of lithium. Um, this uh, exhibits it better than anything so receive the batteries at 3.3 three long days of charging they're at 3.4 but there's uh and again I look back at the video look back at the pictures 600 700 uh, amp hours put into them in all that time frame just to get a tenth of a voltage increase so lithium can't use voltage for state of charge there it is in black and white